I've been on the fence about getting a hot air rework station for quite some time. I've engaged with a bunch of you on a number of my repair videos who have asked me, why are you using a soldering iron for this repair? Wouldn't it make more sense to use hot air instead? I've always felt that it was important for me to grow into my tools, whether it's working on consoles, electronics, tinkering in the garage. So my approach has been to start with basic gear, and once I can appreciate the value of what more expensive or higher quality equipment has to offer, then I can consider upgrading. I've put this off for long enough. I've been wanting to get a hot air rework station for a while now, so I went on Amazon to see what kind of basic gear I could get to start out with some SMD work. What I did not expect to find was a unit for $35. I did a little window shopping about six months ago and I remember seeing units in the $50 to $60 range. So I'm not sure how long these have been on the market, but this is the first I learn about units in this price range. So here it is folks, China's latest and finest. You get the power unit or the controller, the hot air gun itself, and three nozzles. And since I was running under budget, I thought to myself, let me throw in a fire extinguisher. If there ever was a time where I felt better safe than sorry, this was probably it. All right guys, let's fire this thing up and figure out how it works. I don't have a soldering mat, so I'm just gonna use the underside of a baking tray to shield my desk. The instructions say to just turn it on and adjust the temperature with the up and down arrow. You kind of have to do it quickly, otherwise it goes back into standby mode. Temperature is in Celsius, I'm gonna set it to 350 to start out, and we'll go up from there. The beep it makes is kind of shrill, it's a little bit annoying, so now that you guys have heard it, I'm gonna turn that down in editing as I make temperature adjustments throughout the rest of this video. So here I'm punching in the same temperature again, I was confused why it wasn't turning on. I did that again for a few minutes until I finally realized that as a safety feature it only turns on when you pick up the soldering gun to use it. That's pretty cool. If you look in the corner there, you can see the temperature climbing up to 350, and within a few seconds it's ready to go. And when you set it back down, it starts blowing out cold air at high speed, and you can see the temperature rapidly decreasing there as the unit cools itself down. This particular solder is made by a company called Alpha Metals, and it's either really low quality or I got a bad batch or something. It's supposed to be leaded, which means it should have a low melting point, but it behaves more like unleaded solder and it has a high melting point. I switched to MG Chemicals almost a year ago and I haven't looked back since, but this will be a good test for the hot air gun because I'm familiar with how my soldering iron handles the alpha metal solder compared to the MG Chemicals solder, so this gives me a chance to see if it's any different when using hot air. I'm going to power the unit down, let it cool off, and install the narrower nozzle. This is the leaded solder that I use in almost all my projects. I'm at 350 degrees Celsius here and I'm on the lowest fan speed. And that's melting really, really well. And that's what you'd expect to see from leaded solder. It's why we mix it with unleaded solder to lower the melting point when you're removing components from a circuit board. I think I'm ready to start practicing removing some components. I'm gonna do that on this junk DVD player. I've set the temperature to 400 Celsius here, and I'm also trying a higher airflow setting. The airflow numbering is a little bit weird. The lowest setting is F5 and the highest setting is F10, and I'm on F8 right here. And in case you're wondering why some of the components on this board are not where they're supposed to be, I've used this board for soldering practice many times before, but this is the first shot where I actually try some hot air. Okay, that wasn't the most elegant retrieval. Let me try something else. That took a little flight. I like this temperature. The components are coming off easy, but I think my airflow is a little bit high, so let me turn it down a little bit. Okay, I'm down to F6, which is the second airflow setting, and that fan's already a lot quieter. This feels a little bit more comfortable. They take an extra second or two to come off, but I feel like I have more control. For my first time using hot air, this is working really well, and it's quite a bit of fun. 
here I'm experimenting with a higher fan speed again and I'm able to remove these components one by one with no effort at all. Okay, you guys get the idea. Next, I want to try one of the through-hole components, so I attempt removing this LED. And, rookie mistake, I should be blowing hot air on the underside of the component, not on the top side of the component. I moved on to another through-hole component and I successfully removed the headphone jack, but I realized I wasn't recording. There's two of them on this board, so let me do the second one on video. I'm also quickly realizing that I do need to adjust the nozzle for the size of the component I'm using, and the smallest nozzle is probably not the best to use for a slightly larger component like this. Getting that feel is going to take some practice and experience. Considering I'm only half an hour into this and I had the lowest expectation for this tool, I'm pretty proud of how we're doing. Not too shabby. Damn, this is fun guys. This is fun. No rip traces, it's not terribly difficult to get the hang of, but obviously I have a long way to go, and it would be a nightmare trying to remove these components with just a soldering iron. Well, in between takes, I kinda burnt my finger a little bit. It's just a minor burn, nothing serious. Do you guys see those big letters that say HOT? Yeah, don't touch the silver part in that area. It's hot. Alright guys, let's wrap this video up. I'm gonna remove the largest chip on the board. I'm on 450 Celsius, fan speed 8. Skipping ahead a little bit, I have the largest nozzle installed. I've been on this chip for about 30 seconds so far. And there she goes. Absolutely incredible guys, I'm kind of blown away. All the pins are intact, there's no rip traces. The fact that I could remove SMD components this large using a tool like this, that's very very cool. So here's what I have to show for an hour with a $35 hot air rework station. This would be a fantastic way to salvage parts off a junk board. And opening up the door to repairing consoles or other electronics that require some level of SMD work. Alright guys, share a few closing thoughts. I've said this a couple of times already, but I really went into this with very low expectations. And I'm pretty impressed by this tool. I don't regret buying it, and I'm not going to return it. This thing was $35, and because of the price tag, we need to put things into perspective. I'm under no illusion that I'm getting reliability, accuracy, or longevity with this device. But to solder an SMD component, or maybe remove a USB port a couple of times a month? Why not? I think the way that they've managed to price this the way that they did is by cheaping out on this power supply or controller unit. There's no question in my mind that the components in this thing are probably from the bargain bin. But for what it is, and what I plan to be using it for, I think I'm going to be able to start building some skills with hot air, and approach a couple of repairs that I haven't been able to yet because I don't have hot air. Here's perhaps just one small example of that. I bought this faulty PS3 super cheap almost six months ago, and it does power up and read games, but only using component cables, check out that HDMI port. That port needs to be swapped out. It wouldn't be impossible with a soldering iron, but it would be difficult. I'm gonna spend a few more hours practicing on some junk boards, both removing components and soldering them back in, and I think this will be the first console repair that I try using hot air, at least to remove the port. And on the subject of PS3s, a friend of the channel, subscriber by the name of Game and Clyde, sent in a very generous donation. I haven't opened this yet and we'll open it together on video. There are a few consoles in here and one of them is a BC PS3. We all know what they suffer from. A certain color, light of death. And it's not exactly a soldering iron kind of repair either. Definitely something you want to have hot air for. Thanks for watching everybody. See you again soon.